Sir, I'm grateful to the honorable members for extending broad support to the bill. Following the Standing Committee's report, we are moving 12 official amendments, and these official amendments will reflect the decisions of the Standing Committee and the decisions of the government. So I don't think a long reply is necessary, but I will clarify a few issues that have been raised. Firstly, the Act defines money laundering, and I would invite honorable members to look at Section 3 of the Act. Whoever directly or indirectly attempts to indulge or knowingly assists or knowingly is a party or is actually involved in any process or activity connected with the proceeds of crime and projecting it as untainted property. So the key words of money laundering are anything that is the proceeds of a crime and projecting it as untainted property. The crimes are defined in the schedule. We have amended the schedule from time to time. More crimes have been added to the schedule. This crime in the FATF language is called a predicate crime. There must be a crime, there must be proceeds of a crime, and someone must deal with the proceeds of a crime as if it is untainted property, whereas it's really tainted property. That is money laundering. There could be money laundering arising out of a case of murder. There could be money laundering arising out of a case of cheating. There could be money laundering arising out of a case of any one of the crimes mentioned in this schedule. What the world is concerned about is, among other things, they're concerned about grave crimes with grave ramifications like terrorism, human trafficking, drug trafficking, smuggling. These are grave crimes which know no borders. Fake currency is a crime which knows no borders. These crimes are committed, and those crimes are punishable under specific laws. But the proceeds of the crime continue to flow into the economy and have grave implications for the economy. So a standalone offense called money laundering has been created where while the crime will be prosecuted and punished according to the domestic laws of the country, the proceeds of the crime also should be prosecuted. Anyone who deals with the proceeds of the crime should be prosecuted. And that crime, that offense, is called money laundering. I suppose this explains what money laundering is. <coughs> the money laundering is not the same as generation of black money. Black money can be generated without a crime. There may be no crime involved except a violation of perhaps the Income Tax Act, which is not a crime, which is a civil offense. If a doctor or a lawyer or a chartered accountant, if a lawyer or a doctor or a chartered accountant takes fees by cash and does not disclose it, that is a violation of the Income Tax Act. But that money is black money. But that necessarily does not become a case of money laundering. Now, please sit down now, please. Honorable member, uh, honorable minister, please. If there is a crime relating to corruption, it is in the schedule. That money is, of course, money laundering. But I'm, all I'm trying to point out is black money can be generated without it becoming a crime of money laundering. taking fees without bringing it into account, uh, paying capitation fees for admission, accepting capitation fees for admission, 
unless there is an act which makes it a crime, this is black money, and black money has to be dealt with as black money. It may not quite come under money laundering. Many cases of black money will indeed come under money laundering, but there will be many cases of black money which will not come under money laundering. The crucial difference is, in the case of money laundering, there must be a predicate crime, a crime as defined in the schedule to the act. Now we are expanding the schedule to include more crimes, for example, the crime of cheating. Therefore, in a discussion on money laundering, if we divert our discussion to black money, then the discussion will run into several hours. So my request is that we have a separate discussion on black money, because much to be said about black money, much to be said about how black money is generated, who generates black money, and much to be said about how black money can be detected and how black money can be brought to account. So there was some reference to the suggestions made by the <coughs> Standing Committee. Now, as I said, all the suggestions made by the Standing Committee have been accepted. Those which require official amendments have been converted to official amendments. But there are many suggestions which don't require an official amendment, they require administrative action. But the point I wish to make is we have accepted the suggestion, we are taking administrative action, we will take administrative action on the suggestions which do not require amendment, official amendments to the bill. For example, there was a suggestion that manpower is inadequate and training is poor. We have accepted the suggestion. And what have we done? We have augmented the sanction strength of the officers and staff from 745 to 2064 in the Enforcement Directorate. But to recruit 1,319 additional officers is not a job that can be done in a month or two. If you have to recruit 1,319 additional officers, I have to go through Staff Selection Commission or UPSC. It will take time, but action is underway. The initial action has been taken. The strength of the ED has been increased from 745 to 2,064. And now we are taking steps to fill the sanction post by way of direct <coughs> recruitment, <coughs> deputation, and promotion. I mean, I could go through each one of the suggestions, but I want to assure the House, every suggestion made by the Standing Committee in this case has been found to be a wholesome suggestion. Government has no quarrel with those suggestions. We have accepted those suggestions, and we are acting on those suggestions. So there was some reference to a reporting entity by Mr. Sanjay Nirupam. He's not here. I think he should read uh, the definition of reporting entity with section 2, clause N, as is being amended. He will find that section 2, clause N, includes stockbroker, subbroker, etc. Therefore, a reporting entity includes a stockbroker, subbroker. He read only the definition of reporting entity. Reporting entity means, among other things, an intermediary. An intermediary is defined as including a stockbroker and a subbroker. Therefore, stockbrokers and subbrokers are brought under reporting entities. So, some reference to a foreign bank. This is not a new piece of information. In a debate on black money, uh, raised by the Honorable Sri L.K. Advaniji, the then Finance Minister did make a detailed reply in which he referred to the information that had been received from the Government of France and the action that was being taken. <coughs> Subsequently, uh, in the middle of August, in the last session, my ministry has answered a starred question and an unstarred question on this very matter. Therefore, uh, what was purported yeah, 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 same bank. What was purported to be, quote unquote, revealed uh, was not revealed. It was already there in the public domain. It is already there in the records of parliament. And uh, we are taking action, but we are bound by agreements between the two countries. Within the limits of the agreement, action is being taken. And I can assure the House that every piece of information received from a foreign government regarding accounts purportedly held in a foreign bank 
every single piece of information is being investigated and action has been taken and more action will be taken. I cannot say more because the matter is still under investigation and further adjudication. Sir, uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Simmelay, is he not here now? He has moved three amendments, uh, but I told him if he raises the amendments, I will reply. But he's not here. Uh, the first amendment moved by him is really redundant because in any manner, it can only be in any manner, so the words are really redundant. Use in any manner, so use is comprehensive enough. In any manner is really redundant. The second amendment, against the order of an adjudicating authority, there is an appeal provided under section 26. Therefore, if the order is a bad order, or an order that extends the period of retention for a much longer period, there's an appeal provided under section 26. And the third one is that if a foreign court acquits the offender, the Indian court still has the discretion to accept that judgment and release the property or conduct its own inquiry and say, I'm sorry, I will not release the property. That has been provided for. So what Mr. Semele has referred to as substitute lines 14 to 16 on page 11 is really not necessary because we have provided that after notice to the other party, he may or may not order release of the property. So what Mr. Semele says is only in a different language. If you compare the language of the official amendment and the language of Mr. Semele's amendment, the thrust is the same. So I would request Mr. Semele, should he be present here at the time of the third reading, not to press the amendment. The official amendments fully and completely reflect the recommendations of the Standing Committee. The suggestions which do not require an official amendment are being acted upon. I think a very important message will go not only to the FATF and the over 100 countries that are represented in FATF, but also to those who uh, deal with proceeds of crime, that Parliament, despite enacting the law in 2002, has improved upon the law in 2005, again improved upon the law in 2009, and is once again improving upon the law in 2012. So with these words, I commend that the bills be, bill be adopted and the official amendments be accepted. <laughs> Sir, may I add that to a question asked by my friend, where is he? He's not here. Uh, Ajay Kumar, under the PMLA, 37 prosecutions have been launched. None has ended in a conviction yet. At the same time, none has ended in an acquittal yet. 37 prosecutions are underway. We are trying to speed up these prosecutions. <laughs>